Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Moto Stop Show. We're back in our studio here in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida, the Big Deal Production Studio. I'm CJ Harris, your host. Right now is episode 17. That's right. We have did 17 of these things, and it's been a beautiful thing, and it continues to grow, and we continue to have fun. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, and we're going to dive into it really fast. Tonight's show is going to be a little different, kind of like last week. We're going to break it down into two parts. So we're going to have the pro show. We're going to talk right now about everything going on with the Monster Energy Supercross, what happened in Detroit City, heading down to St. or up to St. Louis, where uh, we'll, we'll see what happens this weekend. As well, after we wrap up the pro show, we're going to kick off Amateur Hour at around 8 o'clock. We're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that's going on and uh, make sure you tune in because we gotta we got to talk about some tragedies that struck um, very close to home here. And, uh, you know, if, if you guys don't want to tune in, we, we definitely want to go ahead and give a few shout-outs to the, the Craig family um, coming back from a race and, and tragically ran off the road and their motorhome caught fire. And uh, Chris and... Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the, the young young man's name, but both were killed in that accident. So uh, our thoughts and condolences go out to them, as well as the whole Malloy family, really close to the Malloy family, and uh, Waylon Malloy passing away this weekend. Um, we're we're, we're going to miss them all, as well as Waldo Motorsports lost a great worker, John. Um, a lot of you guys that raced at Waldo Motorsports have seen John. He's normally by the gate. Uh, he passed away this weekend as well. So uh, we're going to dive more into that in the amateur hour, but I just wanted to give a shout-out during the pro show here um, and uh, let, let you guys know that we are thinking about all of the families out there and uh, our condolences are with you. So, um, yeah, we're live on Facebook as you guys are jumping on. Don't forget, there's a bunch of ways to watch the show, whether it's uh, download podcasts on Stitcher, iTunes, or TuneIn. That way you don't have to watch if you travel around the, the, the country. Um, very easy to uh, listen that way. As well as our Facebook Live and our YouTube page, The Moto Stop Show. Make sure you go click like, subscribe, and tell all your friends about it. So let's jump into Detroit. The track layout, I uh, was pretty stoked about it at first. And the original track plans were they were going to come out of the gate. They were going to go up into the world, you know, the famous, once you go to Detroit City, uh, everybody knows we go up in the grandstand, so it looked like the start was actually going to come straight out, go up in the grandstands, make a left, come back down. Well, they modified it a little bit. I'm not sure what the reason was. Maybe it was because it's going to be high speed. Um, so it, it turned a little bit before that, and once it came back into the rhythm section, um, we had a sand section that was pretty gnarly at Detroit, and to me, I kind of liked it. The sand was a, you know, an equalizer. It provided some great passing moments. Uh, we'll get into it. Eli Tomac going around the outside in that sand section, just looking phenomenal. A lot of riders bitched about sand. I tell you, if I was riding, I was going to be bitching too because the sand is straight nasty. Once it gets in your goggles, you can't see nothing. It's hard to get off. But with the sand section and you've seen, I think it was the heat race coming out of the whoop section, Guys were just diving left and right, tucking the front end, and it, it definitely separated the good riders from the great riders from the damn awesome riders. And we've seen that as the, the racing progressed and the heats and the, the mains came around. So, um, yeah, the track was, uh, I mean, like I said, it was okay. I wasn't too thrilled, but it, uh, it wasn't like, damn, that track really sucked neither. So let's break down some of uh, the 250 racing here because... My, oh my, that was a fireworks of a show out there. And those boys from Jordan Smith, um, Adam Cincerella, Cincerella, Joey Savacci, um, Dylan Fernandez, Fernandez, how about that? Led nine laps, I believe, nine laps to get fourth place. That's heartbreaking. Go out there. You got to be mentally thinking as you're racing nine laps lead and you're like, I got this. This thing's in the bag. This thing's in the bag. Well, then here comes a freight train and shit starts to happen. And when shit starts to happen, it happens fast. And they were coming. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about the pro circuit boys of Joey Savacci and Adam Cincerella. And sitting in the back, you had little Jordan Smith, uh, Troy Lee Ryder, the number 44, kind of scoping out, seeing what's happening. And... He was able to capitalize on it and take advantage of it. You know, now, Joey Savacci did fall, as well as Adam Cincerella did go down as well. So if those riders didn't fall, 
Does Jordan Smith have the speed to win? I don't know. I think he may, you know, once it was in the crosshairs, I think he could have definitely hunted him down and figured it out. But uh, great race in action. We got to see a lot of bar banging. We got to see a lot of clean block passing. Um, you know, especially Joey Savacci and Jordan Smith right there at the end. Savacci goes in the inside of Jordan. Jordan's able to check up. Comes back, and they come over the finish line jump where you're going outside. Now, um, rolling the dice, I guess, by Joey Savacci as he jumps to the outside. He thought the momentum was going to be able to carry him in. But with that gap right there, you, you can't. you got to protect that inside. Uh, and Jordan Smith was able to go inside, just put a nice little clean bump on him, go on, take the win. That's Jordan Smith's first ever Monster Energy Supercross win. So a big shout-out to him and the whole team. Absolutely amazing ride. Flawless. So as we continue to talk and you guys continue to jump on there live on our Facebook, I see all you guys coming out there. So if you got something that you want to talk about or you want to make a point, definitely reach out and put it down there as I just see Tyler Payne all the way up North Georgia, Florida, or North Georgia, Florida, what the heck? Uh, up in North Georgia. He said, we know about that freight train. So uh, yeah, they were coming in a, in a great ride by Adam Censorilla. Dropped back to that fourth place position, uh, but didn't give up. Hard charge to come back and uh, get Fernandez on the last lap, I think, or second to last lap for a third place. So, once again, Adam Cincerillo is still getting better out there as well as Joey Savacci. We know he's got the talent, he's got the skill, and he's got the speed. Um, it's good to see him up front. Little bobble, and I, like I said, I think he uh, if he didn't have that bobble, he would win. Taking that 250 into our St. Louis, which is coming up this weekend. St. Louis is always an epic race. Uh, we got Jordan Smith coming off a high. Jordan Smith, you know, can't talk enough about this guy because if you guys remember, last year he's on Geico and struggling with R.J. Hampshire, you know, not getting the results they wanted. Both super talented kids, both expected to win. Neither one able to put in the results that they wanted. So something wasn't jiving between Geico and Jordan, and they decided to split ways. Jordan jumps on the KTM, and uh, now look at him. He's got his first win ever. We, and as you, I see all you guys jumping on the, the Facebook, so keep going. Make sure you share the video. And uh, got Brinsley on there, Nick Meyer. I see all you guys. Nick just said, I think we're going to see more speed out of Jordan. I, I got to agree with you. I mean, <laughs> after he gets that win, it's almost like um, you know, a shark tasting the blood. It's a, it's a thrill. You know, It's a high that he's going to continue to chase. And, and that's normally... They talk about the momentum and the snowball effect as you, as you continue to roll. It continues to grow. I think we're definitely going to see that with Jordan. Uh, if, you know, even if he does not win this weekend, he's definitely a podium guy. He's one, two, or three for sure. Points leader, Zach Osborne. Um, unfortunate went down in that first corner. Uh, it was a bobble. I'm not going to say whose fault it was, you know, a lot of riders came over from the outside, came over pretty hard. Did they have the jump? Possibly. But with him going down, it definitely spiced things up in the 250 class. So uh, the top 10 right here is how it finished out. Number one, 44, Jordan Smith. Second place is going to be the 17 of Joey Savacci. Third place, the 36 of Adam Cincerella. The number four spot is the 108 of Dylan Fernandez. In that fifth spot, you have the number 42 of Kyle Cunningham. Number six, the 45 of Mitchell Harrison. Seventh spot, 48 of Christian Craig. We're going to put a side note right there about Christian Craig. Tyler Payne just said, sorry for the silence. Tyler Payne said he was going to win for Cody, Cody uh, Gregg, and he, he did. So um, we're going to put a side note by the seventh place uh, finisher, Christian Craig, there. We're going to talk about that here in a second. Eighth place, the 54 of Gannon Audet. Ninth place is the 49 of Anthony Rodriguez. And tenth place, the number 50 of Luke Reslin. So with that being said, I just went down the top 10. You notice I didn't say Zach Osborne, who was our points leader in the 250 East. Zach Osborne, 18th finish. Something happened to his front wheel. Had to pull in, had to get his front wheel replaced, which took a lot of times. He was two laps down at one point in time. It looks like he finished the race. Points lead, the red plate, now goes to Joey Savacci. Drops uh, Jordan Smith into sec or tied for fourth place I believe I'm going off memories here so now this thing really tightens up I mean I'm telling you what it's anybody's ball game will Zach Osborne come out in St. Louis with the heart the determination the fire to go back out and shut these guys down throwing Nate Ingram says throwing the move over the flag 
I don't know what that means, Nate. Give me more information. You know, with Zach Osborne, we're going to look out for him. Got to put him 1-2 if he has a good start. Uh, definitely up there for St. Louis. Joey Savacci knows he can run the speed. Now he's got the points lead. Is that the motivation, the momentum that he needs to run away, get you another win, and uh, continue with this and wrap up this championship in the, here in the 250 East? And don't count out Jordan Smith and Adam Cincerella sitting right there in the back in that third and fourth place position. So this 250 championship literally is up for anybody. All right, so uh, the points right now on the 250 East is Joey Savacci leads with 124. So sitting back nine places, Jordan Smith in the second place. Zach Osborne drops back to the third place with 114, and Adam Cincerella 113. So think about what I said. Adam Cincerella in that fourth place points, 113 points. Next up, 114. One point separates uh, fourth from third, and two points separates fourth from second, and only nine point difference from second to third. So a lot of times as we go through these series and we start getting uh, you know deeper into it, most of the time it is a runaway, and we're like, man, we, if this was only tight, it would be such better for the fans. Well, guess what? We got what we wanted this time. It's tightened up in the 250 class as well as the 450 class. We're going to talk a little bit about Christian Craig here. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, Christian Craig, in, in practice A, we got Carl Live Ruthless on there. We see you, brother. Sorry you're not in here with us this week. Um, so Christian Craig, their time practice. And if you guys don't know, I'll give you a quick feeling how the practice goes. You go out and you have a, a non-time practice. You get to learn the track. You go out in the first time practice, and you can set a fast time. This creates your pole position, right? You have two practices in time practice. Well, the first one, Alex Martin, I guess, uh, messed up one of the fast laps for Christian Craig. And I say fast laps because normally what happens is the guys go out and they try to throw down a heater, make a really fast pass, get their time up on the board, and then they roll a lap or two, and then they go out and set another fast lap. It's not like an all-balls-out race from the get-go. Well, Alex Martin got in and uh, messed up Christian Craig's fast lap, and we all seen what happened. As he comes in, it was just a worst-case scenario. He took the inside line, and as soon as he uh, you know, went to go bumping, he, he meant to make contact with Amart, but I don't think he meant to destroy him like what happened. So as he makes contacts, Alex Martin's getting on the gas. He goes over the berm, literally loops out, and, man, it is pretty, pretty gnarly. Justin Starling says, talk about wheelies. <laughs> um, so Alex Martin out for the night. Possibly something broken. I haven't heard any reports. I don't know if anything's broken or not. But this goes back to just what we, we dug into last week and what me and Carl Rutledge were talking about. When you guys go out and practice, especially going back to these, uh, you know, the, the amateurs, the, the mini bike days, the mini bike kids, and I had it this weekend at, at one of my local races, and we'll talk about an amateur hour, but practice is practice. Now, yeah, is it cool to have your number up on top of the board? Absolutely. But ask Alex Martin how cool it was not to be in the main event. It's definitely not cool. Which leads me into two things. One, I got to give Christian Craig props because he came up and he owned it, you know, from the time he got on, he said, hey, man, I, I didn't mean I, – I did it. I own it. I didn't mean to do it. Goes out, wins the heat race, which should put him in a good position for the main event. Unfortunately, the AMA steps in and goes, well, hey, we're the AMA and we don't do anything uh, ordinary or, um, you know, with a pattern. So we're going to fine you tonight, and you're going to be penalized by last gate pick in the main event. I, I did some digging and, you know, whatever. I mean, the, the fine I heard is $3,000. Now, I don't think it's going to make or break Christian Craig for $3,000, but here's what I'm curious to know. So with this $3,000 goes to the AMA, I do believe. I read through the AMA 2017 rules today, and I couldn't figure out uh, if this is allocated to somebody else or where this money that comes from these penalties actually goes to. One would think that it should go to Alex Martin. Alex Martin couldn't even make the main event, therefore didn't even get any start money, couldn't get, you know, anything. So, you know, I don't think it does, but one th would think it would go there. I actually think it just goes to the AMA, therefore benefiting them more. So why wouldn't they hand out more fines and penalties, which kind of sucks. It's almost like a, um, 
you know, like a police system. Just, you know, let's go write more tickets to uh, gener generate more money for our uh, our police station there. So, but big shout out, like I said, to Christian Craig for owning it up. And Alex Martin, uh, hope you're all right, dude. Hope you get better. And, uh, you know, hopefully we see what happens. I heard he's out for St. Louis. So if you're playing fantasy, don't put him in there. Um, but we'll see what happens. So all I got to give my quick pick. So here's what I'm going to go with uh, St. Louis. I'm going to say Joey Savacci, first place. Jordan Smith, second place. Adam Cicerilla, third place. And uh, Fernandez in that fourth place finish if he keeps riding. So as always, guys, you're on live. We're on Facebook Live. I see all you guys on there. I see Josh Davis on there. Mr. Ron Davis, Justin Starling's jumped on. Big shout out to Starling. We got to get you on here, buddy. Uh, Carl Rutledge. As it scrolls, I can see your comments. So um, you guys let me know if there's something I missed or you guys want to talk about. We're going to jump into the 450 class here. We can get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. That was my point standings right there that I couldn't find right in front of my face. We'll run down the, the results here real quick and then we'll break this race down. Here in episode 17 of the Moto Stop Show. Pretty awesome. So, Eli Tomac coming in on top of the podium. Marvin Muskin with a solid ride, second place. Ryan Dungey drops back. Nate Ingram, yes, we will talk about that. Ryan Dungey drops back to that third place position. Blake Baggett in the fourth place position. What a great ride by Blake. How about Davey Millsaps? Um, fifth place. And I really thought he was going to get better or ride better at, or not ride better. I thought he was going to have a better finish. Sixth place, we got Jason Anderson. Seventh place, we got Brock Tickle. Eighth place, we got Josh Grant. Um, ninth place, we got Dean Wilson. And in tenth place, we got Cole Seeley. Uh, as always, Eli Tomac is uh, on fire right now. I mean, you got to just call it how it is. And that guy, I believe, is unstoppable. He's got the confidence, the momentum right now, the snowball effect, as we touched on earlier, to, to go. Great question coming in from Ben Bass. Going to be a co-host with us uh, via phone here in the amateur hour coming up here at uh, 8 o'clock, so make sure you tune in for that. But So Ben Bass says, would Eli look so fast if Roxon was racing? Well, it's a very simple answer, Ben, because he rides a Kawasaki, so hell yeah, he's going to look fast. Uh, no, in, in fairness... Um, you know, Roxon was on a different level, and I, I don't know that Tomac is, is actually on that level right now. I think he's pretty close to it. My This is my theory and my thought process on that. So, I believe when Kenny got hurt, I believe Kenny was up here at this level, right? Well, Roxon has created a level here which is greater than everybody else. I don't think he's reached the level, and it doesn't look to me like he's going as fast as Kenny was before he got hurt. Now, in saying that, you know, you're only as fast as the people you ride with uh, in, in most cases. So I believe if Kenny was still on the track, he would be able to, you know, or I believe if Kenny was on the track, Eli would be able to step up to that level and, and be there already. But I feel like right now he doesn't have to, to be at that level. You know, he, he gets himself a comfortable lead and he's able to, slack it back if he feels like he's getting a little out of control or pick it back up and whatever the case may be. And, and we see that time and time again, um, you know, with all these wins, he, he's in a good position. He's got what it takes to win this championship, which is getting really close. What is going on with Ryan Dungeon? There's a lot of speculations that, you know, he's going to retire this year. Well, a few things. He does have a contract from KTM. Uh, this is his last year, but there is another offer. It, it's still up in the air. He hasn't confirmed this may be the mindset of somebody saying, you know what, we're just going to ride this thing out and wrap it up, go out as one of the greatest uh, riders of all times we've ever seen, and ride off in the sunset, which, you know, can't blame him. The guys did an amazing career, amazing talent on a dirt bike, so we'd love to see him come back and ride again, uh, but we don't know. And, and just like Nate Ingram says down there, Tomac has to continue to get good starts and not have to fight to the front. I agree 100%, Nate, but I also think right now, the level that Tomac's on, he's coming to the front no matter what. 
will there be an accident? Almost like Ken Roxon, you know, Kenny didn't get a good start. He was coming to the front. Now, was he pushing the envelope when he wrecked? Yeah, he was. So, you know, would something like that happen to Tomac? Yeah, possibly, but he's coming no matter what. He's just on that level right now. So, with our 450 class, um, you know, getting close up, a lot of our top riders, uh, the points are really tightening up now. And Ryan Dungey still our points leader with 254 points, but Eli Tomac in that second place with 247 points. 247 points. Seven points separate this 450 class going in, and we have one, two, three, four, five more rounds to go. So 17 rounds. Marvin Muskin, not too far behind, is the 207, has, two, has 207 points. And then Cole Seeley in that fourth place. And these are your point standings there. Now, I got to mention, you see if you guys seen this, uh, Chad Reed. So what the hell is going on with Chad Reed? He, Daytona, we all seen the, the crash in Daytona. He comes in, gets a little squirrely right before that right-hand corner, grabs a handful of that Yamaha gas, and just rah, sends it, right? Loops out. I thought that was pretty bad. Well, this weekend, he comes through. And uh, not sure really what happened, but he goes to a left-hand corner. And next thing you know, you see his front tire over the top of the berm and his feet flipping over top of him. And you're just like, man, Chad, like, nobody in the corner. Nobody bumped him. Just hopefully the brakes or something didn't work on the bike and he just went over the berm. But even then, you know, and, and like Ben Bass just said, where's James, James Stewart at in this whole picture? You know? Think about this great epic racing we have in this great series that has been created, and we don't even have James Stewart with us right now. Uh, I don't think he's ready to retire, but where the hell is he at, Ben? I mean, you know, I don't know. Rumors are Monster Cup he's coming back, but we, we I guess we just got to wait to see. Uh, like me and Carl said last week, man, just anything. James brings anything back. It would be amazing. It would be completely amazing. Jason Anderson, third place, last few finishes may be something you want to look at for your fantasy. Eli Tomac uh, having a great finish there in 2015 and 2016, not so good. With momentum, I don't know about that, Ben. With momentum, though, I would say Eli Tomac's going to be your guy to go to. Obviously, you got to go with consistency. You got to go with what's been happening week in and week out. So Eli Tomac has the momentum behind him and is going to be the favorite going into St. Louis. Marvin Muskin, I'd say you got to put him in that second place position because he is pretty, you know, phenomenal right now. He definitely has something for Ryan Dungey. He's uh, tracked him down. He's passed him. So with this being said, what, what do teams do now? You know, Marvin Muskin rides uh, with Ryan Dungey on that team, but also trains with him down at the Baker's factory. So, there's got to be something said. There's a lot of money on the line when it comes down to this uh, this championship. So when does it come to the, you know, the KTM factory team says, whoa, Marvin, we need an extra point here or a point there. So let's let Ryan take this thing home tonight or let's do this or let's do that. A lot of politics, a lot of stuff come into play with this, but you got to think that's why they have teammates. That's why they have team members. It is a single man sport. Uh, it's normally man for man out there on the track, but when it comes down to these teams and these teams are spending, you know, lots and lots of money, there, there has to be some kind of thought process there. Nick Myers says Roger DeCosta does not believe in that. Well, I, I would one to say, yes, I'm with you, but I'd also say Roger DeCosta also has bosses. Roger DeCosta being the team manager for Factory K, uh, KTM out there. So with Roger DeCosta having bosses and the bosses say, hey, KTM needs a title. Roger, you know, probably wants to keep his job and uh, we'll make something happen. Not saying that's going to happen, but obviously it's something that you got to look at. Um, but then on the, the flip side of that, you got Josh Grant out there riding with Eli Tomac and Josh Grant getting better week in, week out. He got eighth place in Detroit. So, uh, you know, look for him to be seventh or better this weekend. 
in St. Louis so he can be a spoiler and help, you know, shift the points maybe towards Tomac. It's got to be a bunch of great racing. I'm looking forward to St. Louis. I think you guys are as well. It's getting pretty, pretty tight with this series, and a lot of stuff could happen. All right, well, we thank you guys for checking out the Pro Show. Make sure you leave your comments, likes, feedback. Uh, if you want to see a little different format, a little something, put it down there. Let's talk about it. Um, make sure you tune in. Coming up here at 8 o'clock, Amateur Hour, talking about local amateur racing and some stuff right here close to home. CJ Harris, your host, that brings you the most excitement in motocross action right here in the Big Deal Production Studio. We'll see you guys at 8 o'clock.